With Avalanche integrated into Thorchain, you can now earn yield on your native Avalanche by pairing it with Rune and liquidity pooling on Thorchain. So this tutorial is going to walk you through exactly how to do that so you can start earning yield using the ThorSwap interface. We're at app.thorswap.finance, and if I head over to the dashboard, I can check out what the current yields are. And as of right now, there are two pools using the Avalanche chain, one being native AVAX and one being Avalanche USDC. We might see Avalanche USDT on Thorchain soon as well. And here we'll see the list of all the current liquidity pools and all the stats, including their APR, the yield that they've been earning. And we'll see here that AVAX is at 22.3%. And AVAX USDC is currently at 37.22%. So to start earning that, the first thing that you need to understand is that all of these pools are 50% the asset that you see here and 50% Rune. Rune is the native coin of Thorchain, and that is what allows for the cross-chain swaps to occur. It's using Rune on the back end. So if you're swapping from Bitcoin to AVAX, you're using the Bitcoin Rune pool and the AVAX Rune pool. So whenever you're in any of these pools earning yield, your position is 50% the asset and 50% Rune. So you always have price exposure to Rune. There's no pure single-sided yield as of now, though that is a feature that Thorchain will be rolling out. So let's get some wallets connected so we can start earning some yield. I'll just go up to connect and I'm going to connect a wallet for the Avalanche chain as well as a wallet for Thorchain. And I'll touch on this later, but there are ways that you can do it from just a single side, and then it switches to 50-50 exposure on the back end, but you deposit from only AVAX, for example, or from only Rune, for example, but it's still 50-50. I'll explain that more, but I'll be connecting both chains here. So if I click AVAX, I can see all of the compatible wallets that I'm able to connect. Same if I click Thorchain, I'm going to select both and just connect my XDeFi so I get both of them connected. Got my wallet connected. I have some Rune already in this wallet and some AVAX in this wallet as well as some Avalanche USDC. If you need any of these, of course, the best place to get them is right on ThorSwap itself. Go ahead and do a cross-chain swap from whatever you have to what you're looking for. To deposit to the liquidity pools and start earning yield, I'm going to click on deposit. And let's switch this Bitcoin pool to the AVAX pool to start. We'll do a few examples. And you'll notice this says AVAX plus Rune. So this option is for depositing 50% AVAX and 50% Rune. This option is for depositing only AVAX. And this option is for depositing only Rune. However, as you can see, it's going to be split to 50-50 on the back end. So all of these options are actually the same in terms of how the math will work on your position. Think of these two options as a convenient step so that you can manage it from only one wallet. For example, deposit AVAX, it's split to AVAX and Rune. And then when you eventually withdraw, it's converted back to just AVAX. So let's do a 50-50 example. And let's deposit five of these AVAX with the equivalent value in Rune. And when I add this liquidity, because I'm adding from both sides, I'm going to have to sign two transactions, one from my Avalanche wallet and one from my Thorchain wallet. So let's add liquidity. We'll see a breakdown of exactly what's happening, the stats here. We'll click confirm and then our wallet will be triggered to for us to sign those transactions. This is for the AVAX side. So I'm confirming to send my AVAX into the liquidity pool. And then another transaction is being triggered. And this one's for my rune to go in. So let's confirm that. Now we'll see that it's pending right here and we'll just give it a minute until that confirms. And there it is, it was successful from both sides. So our liquidity position is in. You'll see this message saying your 100 days starts now. What this is referring to is your impermanent loss protection. Impermanent loss can seem really complicated, but in really simple terms, your position is always going to be 50-50. So if AVAX is going up and Rune is going sideways in price, then you could think of it as if you're selling a little bit of AVAX as it goes up for a little bit of Rune. If Rune were to go way up and AVAX were to go up less, then you'd be losing a little bit of Rune and gaining some AVAX. In some cases, this rebalancing could cause a loss such that you're worse off than if you had just held 50-50 from the beginning. And that is impermanent loss, and that is what Thorchain protects you against. So you're gaining 1% protection per day until you're at 100% protection after 100 days. And what that means is that the value that you're going to withdraw after 100 days is no less than equivalent to if you had just held this original 50-50 split.
In reality, that might mean more AVAX and less rune, or more rune and less AVAX, but it would be equivalent to the value of 5 AVAX plus 52.7 rune in this example. That's what you're going to be withdrawing at a minimum if you wait until protection. And in most cases, it's of course profitable because you're earning yield from the fees that this pool is generating by allowing the swaps to happen. If you want to do some calculations on how your pool is going to perform over time and make some estimations, you can head to Thor Yield and there's an LP calculator where you can manipulate the numbers and project prices and see how your position would perform over time. To check on our position that's now in there, we can go to the liquidity tab and we'll see that our position is right here. And there's some stats that we can expand and view. This link leads us to Thor Yield where we can track our position in more detail over time. We do have separate videos on using the LP calculator as well as tracking your position on Thor Yield, also on the ThorSwap community YouTube channel. And let's do another example, but for this one, we're going to use the USDC pool and we're going to show you how asymmetric adding works, which is where you add from only a single side. So we're seeing the AVAX USDC here because of my connected wallet. It's not showing all the other coins, but if you were struggling to find it, you could just go to the AVAX tab and you'll see it right there. So this is the USDC rune pool but i'm going to add just from usdc you can see your usdc will be rebalanced upon entering the pool so everything i explained about impermanent loss protection that's from the 50 50 start point you're not getting around that by adding from a single side just think of it as a convenient step in this case think of it as using half your usdc to buy rune so let's add 150 usdc to the usdc rune pool and we'll click add liquidity, confirm, and I'll only have to sign this one from my Avalanche wallet because I'm managing it just from that side. So let's sign that. You'll see that it's pending here with the spinning circle and you can also track the transaction. This will link you to an Avalanche Explorer in this case. And a few seconds later, it confirmed that it's in there. You'll see the pool share here under add liquidity on the deposit tab, or you can go to liquidity and now we'll see both the positions that we added. When you're in these pools or any pool using ThorChain, there's no need to claim rewards or restake, redeposit, anything like that. Your position is effectively a share of the pool and that piece of the pool is earning fees and yield over time. So there's no need to do anything to claim. Eventually, when you do wanna withdraw, you could just do a partial withdrawal if you want to take some profits over time or reallocate things, or you can do an 100% withdrawal, of course. Let's walk through both of these examples really quickly. First, let's do the AVAX USDC pool. So let's go to withdraw. And because we deposited this from only a single side, we're withdrawing back to only a single side. So once again, it was 50-50 the whole time it was in the pool, and then it's being reverted back. We can withdraw partial if we want to, or in this case, let's just withdraw 100%. So we'll click withdraw and confirm. The gas to do this will be just a little bit of AVAX. So make sure you have a little bit of AVAX if you're dealing with AVAX itself or AVAX USDC. So confirm. And while that one's pending, let's just get the other one started as well. So this is the Rune AVAX pool where we deposited both tokens. So let's withdraw all of this and we'll go to withdraw once again and confirm. And for this symmetrical 50-50 withdraw, you'll only actually need to sign on the ThorChain rune side. So we'll confirm that, and then both the AVAX will be sent to our Avalanche wallet, and the rune will be sent to our ThorChain wallet. So both withdrawals have confirmed, and we can see that in our wallet, we've got the rune, we've got the AVAX, we've got our USDC back in our native wallets. So that's all there is to it. This is also the same process for any of the ThorChain liquidity pools. So you can use this to pool some native Bitcoin if you want to, some ETH, uh, anything on this list here. But that's all it takes to start earning yield by liquidity pooling using ThorSwap. And also, if you ever have any issues, you can always get support. You can go to the official Discord server and you can always open a 24-7 support ticket there for one-on-one -on -one help if you need it. So that's it. Give it a try and start earning some yield on ThorChain by depositing to liquidity pools on ThorSwap.